While some remain optimistic about an agreement, others aren't. So what will the blame game look like if nothing is reached? For more on this, we're joined by CCTV's Jessica Stone. And Jessica, the, the White House has a lot riding on this. Absolutely. This is definitely a foreign policy achievement. U.S. President Barack Obama would really like to be able to claim as part of his legacy. But in the past couple of weeks, and even uh, longer than that, the White House has started to throw cold water on a possible deal, saying if one isn't reached, it will be Iran's fault, not the world powers negotiating a potential deal. The optimism for an historic nuclear deal with Iran may just last until the clock strikes midnight on April 1st. I think that we can find solutions that are good for all, that can guarantee that uh, Iran has no uh, nuclear weapons, cannot develop nuclear weapons, but still can develop a civil nuclear program. So I think this is the time when perseverance and firm faith are called for. We can't let it fall apart at the final stage. But the Iranians are already trying to manage expectations. We are still not in the position to be able to say we are close to resolving the remaining issues, but we are hopeful and will continue the efforts. Russia's foreign minister has now left the talks and the world powers at the negotiating table are already laying the groundwork to blame Iran if they leave empty-handed. So far, there's no extension of the talks being offered. It's time for the Iranians to uh, send a clear signal to the international community, community about whether or not they are willing to make the serious commitments required. Uh, and basically live up to their rhetoric that they're not trying to acquire a nuclear weapon. So if they can make those commitments, they should be able to do that by the end of March. Meanwhile, the U.S. is ready to implement even tougher sanctions if there's no deal. Congress is prepared to vote soon, as the U.S. Senate leader told the Israeli prime minister on Sunday. If there's no deal, then uh, the view of this group, uh, similar to your own, is that ratcheting up sanctions might be the best uh, direction to take in the wake of a deal that does not come together. But other world powers are unlikely to agree to further sanctions, with many seeing these punitive measures as a means to get Iran to the negotiating table, not as an end in themselves. And in terms of what happens with those world powers, it may well come down to who has more to lose from not reaching a deal. U.S. President Barack Obama, who needs a win in the foreign policy achievement category, or Iranian President Hassan Rouhani, who came to office promising reform and greater economic prosperity. And remember, if no deal is reached, the monitors are not part of the picture anymore, Elaine, and Iran can go back to enriching uranium. If there's no more interim agreement preventing it from or slowing the process of, of uranium enrichment. And of course, the whole motive here is that world powers really want to keep Iran from enriching uranium for non-peaceful nuclear bomb purposes. So Jessica, if no deal is reached, what would that mean for Iran's potential to create a nuclear bomb? Well, obviously they go right back or they have the capability to go right back to enriching more uranium than they have been. The White House had estimated before this inter interim agreement that they would have what's called a breakout period or a period of uh, getting to the bomb of just two to three months. Now this is slowed, but the game, the, the game changer here is if they can get the deal, they think they can get Iran to a breakout of one year. So somewhere between two to three months and one year is probably where they'll wind up, but they're certainly going to be much closer to getting a nuclear bomb if this deal is, is not reached than if it is. All right, CCTV's White House correspondent Jessica Stone. Thank you so much, Jessica.